audible? Okay, so I have the honor of uh, being the moderator, which is an easy task. I just ask them questions they have to answer. Uh, so, but uh, you know, I think he's introduced the topic already. So it is about uh, change management for HR, you know, tech implementation. Is it important or not? So before we go to the panel, I'd like to just do a quick audience poll. So what I'm requesting you to do is, how high would you rate change management as part of HR tech implementation? Would you say it is useful, which is five, extremely useful, which is five, or not useful at all, which is one? So we'll do a five point thing. So one, not useful at all, five, very useful. So how many of you think it's one? How many would you vote for one? Two, somewhat important. Three, moderately important. I'm worried now. Four, important. Five, okay, I've got some fours. And five. Okay, so we're all true HR people. We like change management everywhere. <laughs> Uh, but but so, so I think it's good to hear that uh, because a lot of times, you know, tech implementation doesn't happen because of various reasons and what we'll focus really around is having a change <coughs> management plan. So we've got some very three interesting case studies um, and what we thought was instead of just sharing successes, we'll also talk about failures uh, and, you know, what worked, what, what didn't work. So uh, each one here has uh, interesting examples. So, so Chitra, I'd like to start off with you. Uh, if you can share a case study and share, you know, sort of three key learnings, you know, as you went through the change. Okay, great to be here and thank you for showing that change is important in tech management. Uh, I guess that's why you're all here in the room uh, paying rapt attention to all of us here. Um, so, you know, usual classic Kotler method of change. So, the eight steps. M most of you must have read it and said, okay, are they going to be talking about that? Now, those eight steps, for all who don't know or need refreshing, is about creating that urgency, creating the team, you know, uh, cascading the vision, um, making sure that removing obstacles, creating wins, change, and then sustaining the change, right? So these were the eight steps. But when we went through change after change, we realized, and today is the VUCA world, so, you know, when you try and think of change in a step way, then you think of it as a process, that you have to start with A and then end with D, and then things will, life will be fantastic. But it doesn't usually go that way. And, to, and this book was written in 1995. So it means, you know, since then to now, there has been a huge amount of change in terms of technology, in terms of just the way people process information, the way they are accepting uh, new things and new technology, because our lives are ruled by technology all the time. So if you try and do it that way, you'll soon see by the time you end with the last step, world has gone on and you know you have to start all over again and it's important today's generation and today's people because they're so used to change and they're so used to technology you don't need to really create that vision and somebody else creates it because the minute you say create a coalition team create the it means somebody else is creating it right versus saying we need to actually start with the people themselves so at least in Pepsi, we, we had a huge, uh, you know, technology, which the tech companies will say, oh, so old, but for us, it was a big step forward, was the whole implementation of something called MySS, which is manager self-service and employee self-service. I know all of you, most of you are like, what, why are you talking about it? But for us, because we had very solid processes. So for example, our career planning, our, uh, you know, of course, our performance, even the organization structure, everything, you know, we wanted everyone to see it and own it. So that means the manager himself decides and gives the promotion, recruitment. Everything has to be in a way that is visible right to Indra Nui. So if, for example, and especially in the global way of working, if I'm talking to a person called, let's say, Jimmy Durkin, and I don't know who he is, so I should be at a click of a button being able to see who are his reportees, who is manager, what is his profile, all of that on the system. But if the system is as good as the information in it, so if I say, you know, if you look at the change management, it says, you know, create the, the coalition, that means, or create the urgency, that means in, you can only do it in one part. But a change like this, for it to be successful, means that it, the whole globe has to go towards the system in one shot. You cannot say, oh, I can only see up to India level and not beyond that, or I can only see up to the HR function vertical and not uh, left or right of it. 
So the idea when we did this, uh, we said, OK, let, let us try and tell people, ask people, what are their problems today when they go to a people management system? And of course, a lot of grievances came out. You know, I don't know where my reportee is. When I look at his uh, scores, they're all over the place. I don't know his profile. I don't know what he did last. I don't know what learning he went to. I don't know what his careers are, nothing. So, okay, so we collected a lot of that. And then we kind of said, okay, here's the system which will help. But, you know, guess what? You are responsible for upgrading it and updating it. So obviously, immediately the feedback came, oh, HR is passing off its you know, work to us. We, you know, you're supposed to be doing all this, and now we are supposed to be doing it. You think managers have no other work but to uh, manage these systems. So we said, it's just you know, like your Facebook or any profile. You need to update it to see it updated. So as long as you update your profile and take ownership of that and take ownership of your people, if you don't want to manage your people, Fine, you can give it to HR, but then don't call yourself a manager. Then you call yourself an individual contributor. So it was very tough conversations, but there was no, you know, it was all circular and it had all had to happen at the same time. Definitely, we did create a help desk for the transition period where we said, you know, there will always be those people who don't update it or who, uh, who let it be. And we need to make sure that the HR does not step in. And even now we see some zealous HR people telling the manager, koi baat nahi, mein kar dunga types. But we've kind of tried to tell, they've removed resources. So we've told them, okay, then, you know, if this is the work you're doing, you don't need to be there. So kind of tried, and this is, it's not, you know, though it's a success, but it's, it's a hard journey. I'm not going to make light of it and say oh, it was uh, stupendous and happened very easily. It didn't happen easily, and the, the change in mindset that somebody else has to take my people and update information of my people, or somebody has to update my own information sitting in an admin office, was a new thing for most people. But once the resources went off, and we said, even if the CEO has a problem, he can either approach the help desk at the first level, or he needs to know how to do it. So once the CEO started demonstrating that, and the beauty of it was the power was that he could actually go and see the entire org structure. So that started becoming, and people said, hey, but this person doesn't report to me, or where's that person who actually supposed to report to me? Why isn't he here? So when the real-time data started showing up and your profile started showing wrong, then that's when the power of the system started coming into play and people started taking much more ownership. And every time there was a career discussion, people would come and say, you know what, I was applying for this role, but somewhere you know, I was not accepted, etc." I would say, does your profile say, you've, you seem to say that you've done X, Y, Z, but look at your profile, it doesn't say anything. That's when it started clicking that, okay, for any career conversation, especially across the globe where a person doesn't know Suchitra from anyone else, they would look at the profile. So having a clearly updated profile made a lot of sense for their own success. So it was about individual success versus creating that urgency, the change, et cetera, et cetera. It was about the here and now, making it really live, and telling them that it's solving today's problem. So it's not about you know, an organization problem, but it is about your own careers, your own DRs, your own team, your ability to manage, your ability to make sure you know who you're speaking to. And that, I guess, created that power. Story. Thanks, Suchitra. In fact, yesterday there was a pre-conference session where we talked about HR tech, comp, uh, you know, implementation. And I think one of the points somebody made, about, I think Pankaj, Pankaj Bansali made this point about the fact that we do a lot of implementation, but we don't keep the employee in mind. So, so good. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, Chaitanya, you're going to share an example of a sort of a failure and, you know, what are your learnings from there? So over to you. Yeah, I think it's that. Yeah. So you were asking a technology provider uh, to share examples of you know why technology implementation fails. So that's quite the key. You're okay. the right person, absolutely so, the right person. Anyways, okay, uh, I have a PPT. Is it possible? So yeah, uh, before getting into the presentation, uh, what I have done is uh, from 40 plus or 50 plus implementations that I have seen, rather than getting directly into uh, the need for change management, uh, I have arrived at uh, four or five themes which are contributing to not so smooth full, uh, not so smooth implementations. I won't call uh, failed implementations, not so smooth implementations. So, uh, yeah, it's so uh, there are just uh, five themes and I would like to spend uh, just a minute on uh, every theme. 
And the first theme is, uh, can you go to slide three or something? Next, next. Yeah, so uh, processes on the fly. Uh, many a times uh, what happens is, so organizations, they try to figure out what processes they have after finalizing the vendor. So then uh, what we see is all of a sudden they realize that they have uh, 10 versions of transfer process or 15 versions of onboarding process. Everyone has uh, their own perception about you know, how this process happens. So what uh, works is uh, when it comes to process mapping, do this before even you get into a meeting where you are sitting with multiple vendors for vendor selection and tell them, okay, these are the processes we have, these are the things you need to solve, whether uh, can you solve or not. So this helps a lot. Okay, in, uh, for you in terms of figuring out what system works for you and there won't be any surprises once you buy the system. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. yeah, second is uh, as is uh, mindset. Uh, so uh, here uh, again when it comes to uh, tech implementations, uh, what we feel is okay, I have this process. Uh, my performance starts with self review and then manager review. After that it has to go through five reviewers. Okay, L2, L3, L4, L5, L6, L7. So no system in the world gives you that, uh, that sort of flexibility. So if anyone says, okay, I'll customize it for you, take it with a pinch of salt. So especially when everyone is moving towards cloud, there is nothing like 100% customization. So don't uh, take decisions based on uh, that vendor's promise. So that is where a lot of, lot of implementations fail. So, uh, <laughs> right, so uh, that's what. Uh, and coming to the organization's perspective, uh, be ready to tweak your processes or change the processes when you are going for HR tech implementation. So it is a huge initiative that you are taking. So uh, it, it is okay, okay uh, to, to hold everything for a minute and take that as an opportunity to streamline your processes rather than assuming, okay, my system gives whatever I am doing. Okay, so that is uh, second thing I would like to highlight on. So uh, can you change? Yeah. Next thing is, uh, Suchitra already mentioned, garbage in, garbage out. So here I have a client who purged the data six times. Oh shit, okay, okay, uh, now CEO is reporting to CEO, oh, take, take it. no, 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 change, change, change. So uh, these kind of things happen. So uh, when uh, we get into the discussions, people say, I want my HRIS uh, to up and running in a week's time. Oh, well, take, I mean, you give me the data, I'll, I'll make it up and running. But are you sure, I mean, the data is accurate. So here, uh, take time in uh, streamlining the data. Take time in uh, uh, revising and correcting the data. So uh, because uh, one of my managers where I was working in EY, uh, she used to say, uh, see, uh, sorry for using this, uh, shitty presentation will always be a shitty pre presentation, irrespective of iterations you do. So if you want to make it right, you have to start from the beginning, from the scratch. All right, so uh, that is where uh, you have to spend enough time on getting the data right before getting into tech implementation. Tech implementation follows later. Okay, so it is, these are not the parallel processes. Okay, these are sequential. Yep. And uh, yeah, and many a times, uh, so you spend uh, two crores, three crores on buying the technology. And uh, who is the person we are dealing with? Probably he would have joined, uh, joined a week back. He says, so, hey, we, we bought you, right? Uh, so, you know, we hired this guy. This guy doesn't even know what is happening in the organization. So, you bought that guy to implement HR tech. And you finalized a vendor, HR tech, a week back and next day he joined to implement that. So, how does it work? Because he doesn't know any context and uh, this guy is supposed to be the change manager for you. So, how does it work? So, it, it doesn't work. So, uh, wherever I have seen successful implementations, uh, one key is to a large extent, it depends on the project manager who is doing the change management and technology implementation with the client. And many a companies, unfortunately, they think project management is vendor's responsibility. Yeah, so every vendor promises, TK, I mean, this is the roadmap, this is the, this is the Excel sheet, I keep updating. Okay, uh, when we are trying to sell, you know, we say 100 things, okay, but when uh, project management and change management is driven, uh, so internally, then only uh, it becomes successful. So to a large extent, he should be a project manager who preferably implemented HRIS before and supported by a good team aligned to individual modules who knows your processes and your cultures very, very well. And this, this brings a lot of, lot of difference for uh, any implementation. Yeah. Okay, for example, uh, you, you bought a 5 crore system and 70% uh, of the organization hasn't even logged into the system. So ideally, it's not giving you anything, you're not getting anything out of it. So, uh, do spend enough time on ensuring adoption is happening by spending enough time on change management and trying. 
No. Thanks, Chaitanya. Very honest. I think when we go through the stalls now, we'll be looking at all the vendors and check checking exactly yeah, what they absolutely. have to offer please, us. Please you know? look up to our stalls. And well. I think you raised a very important point on data, and uh, that is a separate discussion by itself. Who owns the data, really? And I think all of us in HR struggle with data, and you know, uh, so that's a separate session altogether. But thanks for that. Venkat, you've sort of uh, worked in an organization and you've worked in HR and operations, so you've obviously seen many successes and failures. Uh, so why don't you share some, you know, examples and also share some learnings that you've had over the years. All right. Uh, good afternoon. Um, so I worked uh, with Accenture for the last 15 years. Uh, we are a leading… I, I just want to clarify who we are because we get asked saying, are you consulting, are you technology? Uh, we are a leading digital services providing organization. We do many things. Um, I just want to build on what Chaitanya said, uh, you know, the thought struck me, no amount of change management is actually good enough for a bad customer grade solution. So if you're, I think that's, even before change management comes, who is your solution catering to? And if that person is really the end user, and I think in my head that's emerging as I speak to more and more people today as the moral of the story. And many of our own successes and failures in the last 15 years um, and experiments really have taught us those lessons. So what I want to do in the next uh, three or four minutes is quickly share with you with examples how we look at technology in HR. Uh, every single day and I'm going to share with you three frameworks with which we look at it. I think the first framework is uh, where are we on the artificial intelligence spectrum. So there is everything from guesswork to uh, what happened, why it happened, so the reporting, the monitoring, the what's happening now, can you give me five more dashboards to, uh, you know, what will happen, can I make this a little more predictive to what decision should I make. So I think one of the things we have shifted to very, cons very consciously in the last two years specifically is to say, no matter where we are in this, even if we are doing guesswork, when we do the next solution, number one, is it customer grade? Number two, is it going up at least one point on the spectrum towards being more artificially intelligent? Uh, so that's really one. And a lot of this has really resulted in predictive analytics, outputs that we've had across our various demographics of workforce. So we are around 200,000 people in the country, uh, five businesses, and some of them are absolutely massive scale. Uh, and in order for our leaders to really zoom in on what they need to look at, I, I think the ability to have predictive analytics is extremely important. Uh, and this, especially in the area of uh, engagement, performance, uh, you know, very closely related to our client-related metrics and engagement of people. Uh, the second one, the second paradigm that we look at is connecting our tools with our talent priorities. And I said customer grade. So what we've said is we'll invest in five areas in the next uh, five years. Those five areas are uh, us being truly human in the digital world. So really not losing sight of the fact that the 200,000 people are people that come into our facilities every single day. Uh, the second is we want our HR people to operate in a manner that they're advisors. Uh, and I'll give you a very classic example. So we've heard of bots, we've heard of screening automation, we've heard of machines doing interviews. Uh, the question that our recruiters constantly ask us is, what do we do? Are we saying, can you go and be advisors? And nobody knows, firstly, nobody knows what to do when they're not doing it today. That's step one of change management. Step two is, even if they know it, it's a new, whole new meaning to the you know, uh, job itself. So we are looking at how can people engage in a very prescriptive, predictive manner uh, and really not engage in transactions. The third place where we are investing heavily is our inclusion and diversity agenda. Uh, we are as a firm committed to being uh, you know, at 50% uh, men and women employment by the year 2025, which is 50-50 by 2025. And on a scale of 410,000 people, uh, we are inching towards it, uh, you know, slowly but steadily. But I, I think what we are not using inclusion and diversity is for the simplicity of tracking the numbers, but we are using it to check in on support structures we, you know, we are putting in place across the firm, across the workforces to ensure that uh, the structures are supportive of, uh, you know, the different segments of diversity to actually st continue to stay with the firm. And we are checking in with, um, you know, all of that we are measuring for that. The third is, uh, the fourth 
priority is really flexibility and future skilling of our workforce as we move towards newer technologies. And the fifth one, uh, which I will actually uh, share with you a few examples, are focused on millennials, uh, very loosely defined. Uh, you know, de depending on who I talk to, the definition is going to be very different. But I think our focus is to make sure that our customer-grade solutions are talking to our millennials. So it's everything from does a candidate, you know, we, we bring in 10,000 people every single month uh, across the country. So can every, and which means at least 10 times the people that we meet on, on an average. So which means do people have the flexibility to get in touch with the hiring manager through an app, do their own self-scheduling? Uh, do our people have, uh, so our people today actually have apps where they can do voice recording of their self-assessment and it just goes up on the tool. Uh, we have uh, pods, uh, we have bots that actually answer respond, uh, you know, queries to all our new joiners. Uh, and uh, a, a huge amount of gamification, in fact gamification literally on tap uh, for anything you want uh, it to go viral. Uh, we have various methodologies and we actually offer that service to our clients as well. Uh, so I want to do a check-in on time. I think the third paradigm is, um, and I'll just wrap up in 30 seconds. Uh, the third paradigm is we are looking at tech solutions as homegrown, collaborating with leaders, and uh, work that we do with startups. So we realize we can neither conceptualize or build everything ourselves. So everything for us starts with a concept, and then we, the third paradigm that we use is to say, are we going to homegrow this? One example is we scrapped the rating system across the board in the last 18 months and moved to performance <laughs> achievement. Everything to do to, with enabling that is homegrown for us. The second is uh, we collaborate with leaders in the market who already have products. I I'll not name the leaders. Uh, however, uh, you know, for example, we today have in our screening intelligence to tell us what will be the success rate of somebody who's applying uh, based on what we believe is success as defined at Accenture. Uh, and the third one is uh, a whole amount of work that we do with startups, which is everything from AI-enabled screening engines, uh, you know, to you know, self-scheduling app that I spoke to you about. Uh, I I'll s summarize learnings. There are many learnings and lessons, and I'm happy to go into that at an appropriate time if time permits. Uh, but I think at the heart of all of this is uh, our lessons are threefold. One, experiment and fail quickly that is okay. Uh, two, any solution is only as good as it talks to a customer, so it has to be customer grade. It is not, even if you are the user, the receiver of those services could be somebody completely different. Even if you log in 80% of the times, the reality is the person who logs in or accesses it 20% of the time could be the real user. So really that paradigm shift of who are you designing it for. And I think the third one is, uh, very simple, I think communicate, uh, communicate, train, communicate, train, and it's like shampoo, you just rinse and repeat. So over to you, Madhvi. Thanks, Venkat. I think uh, you, you made the point about the solution has to be targeted at a business need or a yeah. customer need, otherwise it won't be successful. Uh, so with that, we have, uh, I think, 15 minutes, but I'd like to open for audience questions because, you know, we've got uh, three people sharing lots of examples. If you have questions, be happy to take that. Otherwise, we can continue the conversation as well. But I think it's nice if we, you know, get co uh, questions from all of you. Sure. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Madhvi. So we are going to put up some questions that have come uh, okay. via the app. So, and while the questions come up, let me uh, tell you that some total has uh, generously sponsored three prizes for the three best questions. So Madhvi will help us select the three best okay. questions. Onerous task. Okay. Yeah. So should I read another question that's visible? Do you want to take the questions? So question one. So let me read question one. Yep. It says, most organizations are crippled with internal IT project teams following waterfall models of development. Have you transformed your IT teams to be agile successfully? How do CHROs mitigate this challenge? Not all technology and implementation is cost effective to be outsourced or bought. Before I go to the panel, I can share an example at Deutsche Bank. So what we've done, uh, obviously we've got a lot of technology challenges because um, over the years, uh, every country, every business has developed their own technology solution. Uh, so what we've done now is we've aligned technology to the businesses. 
so whatever technology solution gets implemented has to have a business link uh, to it so the reporting lines of technology have you know gone from an infrastructure function to actually being part of the business itself yeah. over to any anybody else wants to take that question any insights venkat i think it would be Um, no, I shared sure. that as a three-frame. Okay. Word. Sure. Let me let me read question number two. In global organizations, there's a huge gap in strategic analysis in the space of Comben. Are there any key tools that are being implemented in this space? For example, are we thinking on the lines of allowing real-time exceptions in pay or benchmarks for a leader on the basis of his or her business margins or revenue generation? It's not linked to change management, but we can take the question. Do you want to take that? Yeah, so I mean, this is CNB question actually. Yes. Uh, we for, all have a personal oh. views, I think, on this. So. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so you know, for I'm us, CNB is uh, um, is is obviously part of. Uh, and, and if you're talking about a business leader, business head, there are very clear par metrics and parameters on which bonuses are decided, on which comp is decided, on which uh, all the benefits are decided, and uh, yes, uh, there is a. at least in pepsico there are points there are about you know plus minus 10 points in the bonus system that are given basis the the um, reality of that business so for example um you know if uh, egypt is going through a cha change uh, which it usually is going through then the head of the uh, business sector or even at the corporate level they can decide to give plus or minus 10 points basis that change you know how was it in control or not in control but that depends on the rest of the sector and the rest of the countries performing and not performing so to that extent it is flexible thank you suchitra let's so we uh, so we actually allow real time exceptions in pay i'll explain it okay as we moved into uh, performance achievement we scrapped ratings and rankings we really pushed down the decision making uh, but uh, i think on the second part of the question on benchmarks sorry on second part of the question which is to say will you change uh, you know benchmarks for a leader i think um, you know what resonates with me is what our ceo said he said it's not a we are not moving to a free for all world okay we will still operate within guardrails we still have responsibility to our shareholders uh, we will still make sure meritocracy wins so i think to that extent many organizations have moved towards a far a much greater degree of how compensation is administered but uh, i personally think it's a really far we are still we will still have guardrails no matter how much we stretch it i have yet to come across somebody who says i'm paid well so i don't know if you meet that person let me know as well He's sitting next to me man <laughs> who's that it's chetanya okay uh, the next question is for chetanya chetanya your yes. project manager is the most important ingredient in mm. any tech implementation so can you share top 5 behaviors he or she has observed uh, that such project manager or change leaders exhibit something that works i guess sure yeah. before we before we, uh, chetanya can answer that can we have the person who's asked this question uh, stand up and just introduce himself or herself oh okay yeah can can you can someone send a mic there Ma'am, can you just give your name and the organization you represent? Uh, so I'm Marlene. Uh, I'm currently setting up Arvind's e-commerce business in India. Okay. Uh, so I specifically asked this question because for the last 15 years I've been implementing. I mean, you name the provider, success factors, Oracle Fusion, Oracle's multiple versions. You just name it, and uh, over the different organizations that I have worked for. So I started with Tesco. did their implementation of multiple solutions across 14 countries then i went to flipkart did their implementation now with arvind and all across i've seen it's not the solution right okay. um, i agree there's no idea of a process map it doesn't exist okay but um, the most important person is this project manager correct right yes. and that's the only thing uh, even today uh when i look at companies and if i were to evaluate uh, you know what they did well mm -hmm. uh, i see it's only this project manager so i'm just trying to understand since okay. you're also bringing us another solution into the market uh what are those behaviors that you've exhibited uh, okay. that this person should carry sure so uh yeah thanks for the question so first one um, uh, i would say uh, 
uh, rather than the behavior, uh, one uh, requirement is he should, <coughs> he should know the organization's priorities well. So, for some organization, getting the core, getting the payroll correct is important, that is a priority. For someone getting the performance management system important is, uh, it's a priority. So, uh, it, it all depends on the project manager in setting the priorities, right? What module uh, should be implemented first and uh, what module should be focused uh, at this juncture and next you know what is a module, next what is a module. To a large extent you know it depends on uh, him. So, he should know uh, uh, organization's priorities right. So, obviously, he should understand the business problems uh, related to the HR uh, very, very well. Uh, the second is uh, yeah, as he is a project manager uh, his life will be spent a lot uh, dealing with multiple stakeholders. So, finance things, okay, payroll is important and uh, OD uh, head things, performance is important, uh, someone else operations guy things, core is important and the vendor suggests you something. So, uh, that entire uh, uh, coordination, uh, he should be very, very good at uh, coordinating with the multiple stakeholders and uh, he should be very, very particular about the timelines as well, end of the day. So, uh, the coordination, uh, uh, ability to do the coordination, ability to stick the, uh, ability to uh, stick to the timelines and knowing the organization's priorities and uh, uh, last but not the least, uh, knowing uh, all the processes, uh, what organization has well, uh, what organization wants to implement. So, knowing these uh, processes uh, that also uh, helps a lot. And uh, fifth is as I said, previous experience in uh, handling, uh, if not HRIS, some implementation, enterprise software implementation uh, would really help. Can so, I just uh, add, yeah, can I just add to your point on the timelines, if I were to look for somebody who is a project manager, I would want somebody who has an OCD on timelines, yeah. who really, really, you know, is obsessed with completing things on, on time or, and, and is able to escalate early. Correct. So, That's one. Yeah. And for us, when we have seen many changes, actually we have seen that an HR person, especially if it is HR change. Uh, is able to uh, do it much better than a tech person because once in one place we had a tech person who made it so much jargon and you know complicated everything so people thought it was some huge mega thing that was happening and then we had an HR person with uh, who made it really simple and said in, in really everyday language this is what you need to do this is what is going to help so uh, definitely an influencer strong process driver but somebody who can keep the audience engaged and influence people to come around uh, and drive and take it, take ownership. Chitra, huh. I saw some smiles when you said an HR person who doesn't use jargon. So, good to know there's somebody like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, I just want to add one more thing, okay. So, I'm just going to plus one on Chaitanya's one statement about a cloud solution. And I don't know how many people in this room are going to implement it. But this is what one person told me and I always remember because the way forward is cloud solutions. Nobody is going into the old versions of Oracle. So they always tell me, think there's a room and there are only these many chairs in it and you cannot do very much beyond this. So just use those chairs and adopt the cloud solution. Don't stress it more than that. There are no many more chairs. Sure, yeah. thanks. Let's take one last question. And uh, the one that I'm going to uh, choose is, how do you drive adoption? Other than push, since buying technology is easy, but getting businesses, the business to use it is difficult, business consider this as an HR responsibility. So can the, the person who's asked this question identify, yes, can we send a mic there? Your name and your, the organization you represent. And my request is please keep the context brief because I think it's easily understood. I'm Vikas and uh, I work for Etsil Technologies. Um, and uh, like, uh, you were talking about you have done global implementation. We also have done quite few global implementation uh, around HR tech. And largely the issue is around adoption. Right. And uh, I remember Chaitanya said that we need to keep pushing, but I don't think so. And you know, all of us are doing it in some way or other, but we are where we are. And the adoption is a big problem because business always comes back saying that my primary responsibility is getting a project, getting a business, uh, not pushing my team to do these activities. And, and that tussle is going on for quite many years. So what are the other avenues we can perhaps leverage in our fraternity to push the adoption of HR tech? So uh, uh, pushing means uh, n not putting a mandate on the employees, okay, you have to log into HRIS once, uh, one, once, at least once every day. 
probably it is not even required. Why do you want, uh, why do you want people to spend a lot of time on HRA system? So uh, uh, when it comes to adoption, couple of things what, uh, what are coming on the top of my mind are uh, to a large extent it depends on uh, intuitiveness of the system itself. So if you are buying a system which is very, very complicated to use, which takes you know 10 clicks uh, to apply for the leave or uh, giving a, a feedback to someone else and completing the review, etc. Et so adoption is definitely going to be uh, very, very poor. So here uh, the problem is a lot of systems are built keeping uh, the admin or HR in mind. Okay, are we solving his problem or not? So are we solving uh, this workflow or not? Very few systems are built keeping the end user in mind, whether this is intuitive for that guy or not. So uh, uh, while uh, taking the decision, keep this as uh, one of the important factors and uh, buy a system okay, uh, which, is, which provides good experience for uh, end user as well. And uh, second thing is, uh, don't, don't, uh, uh, don't, don't buy a lot of uh, bells and whistles. So, okay, one system for leaves, okay, this system for capturing engagement, this system for uh, capturing feedback, this system for applying uh, for the uh, reimbursements, etc. So, obviously, this uh, confuses uh, hell uh, out of uh, every, any, anyone. Or at least, you know, uh, provide single platform uh, with single sign-on where people can do everything. So, the more uh, systems you buy, the more logins you create for this user, the lesser will be the adoption. Take it for granted, the lesser will be the adoption. And, and one last thing, uh, uh, while buying, just ask yourself a question, do we really need it? Okay, if you think you absolutely need it, then you know, you can also drive adoption. See, for example, a uh, lot of people are talking about the bots. So for applying for a leave on a normal HRA system, all it takes is a click, then select dates and then apply. So why the hell I need a bot for that? Okay, hi, I want to apply for a leave, which leave? Sick leave, okay, from date, to date. Okay, who, who do you want to see? See, I mean, why, why, why do I enter uh, six, six things? I mean, it is great. I can say, hey, I got a bot for apply leave application. Do you know I, I got a bot inside? So people can apply leave using the bot. But you know, it is taking two minutes vis-a-vis -vis two seconds. So uh, if you buy that, so people may find it very fancy and use it. But uh, trust me, second time, no one will going to use that. So, so. Yeah, and I think uh, for us, what worked is uh, there's no alternative system. So there are no manual or any other Excel files floating around. So whatever reports, whatever we need to do, we do it extracted from this one source of truth. So uh, that helps a lot. So there is no bypassing. If you, like I said, if you have to have a career conversation, the profile that will be used will be the profile from the system. So uh, you know that helps a lot. And Chaitanya, thank you for tempering my emotions about bots. <laughs> Uh, you, you just punctured the balloon called bots for me for a few minutes. No offense. <laughs> no offense, internet. I mean, no, but I, I just want to give it another spin. Adoption is, degree of adoption in my view is directly proportion, proportional to who do you write the value proposition of your business case with. Uh, that's pretty much it. If I don't write it with someone I want, you know, who I want uh, to, you know, who should adopt the technology, it's pretty much downhill from there trying to fight the battle of adoption. So I think it's not just important about when you find a solution, who writes it, but who do you write it with becomes extremely important. Okay, I think sure. that was the last question. We probably just sure. have one minute. Sure. So so very quickly, some total as gift gift vouchers for the three best questions. So can I request Mansi? Mansi Nablakam. I think Mansi asked I I two questions. Question. So Mansi, the, the lady from uh, I think it was Arvind. Oh, they and the last Already one from HCL, oh, okay. the gentleman. Okay. Can you please come and receive your gift vouchers? Or I think we're coming, we're giving it to you right there. So thanks to the panelists, very can engaging. I, can I just do, do one for sure, 40 please. seconds? So I always think that these sessions go on, there's a lot of discussion that happens. I just want to ask the panelists to share with, with the audience one must do and one must don't do kind of thing, just clearly two seconds uh, so that the audience can carry away some key learning. So, so Chitra, over to you. Yeah, so for me, it is what's in it for me is the question that needs to be answered from the employee perspective. Yeah. So for me, uh, compare it with your vacation planning. So the success of your vacation depends on your itinerary preparation. So spend time on that. That's it. Uh, for me, who are you doing it for? Mm -hmm. Are you ahead? Are you catching up? Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Yeah.